It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, this past week cruised on past 10,000 subscribers here on the channel, which feels really good on my, my behalf. Uh, you know, I've put a lot of work into the channel here. So uh, it's nice to see it getting some attention from some people and we can kind of, uh, you know, how, hmm, I like to think of it like putting my hands on the shoulders of the rock hounding community just a teeny teeny bit and uh, giving my two cents on stuff and steering a, steering a direction a little bit. You know, it feels, feels good that to, to help people out with the channel and, and the website and uh, get that, that positive feedback on it. So um, one thing that's kind of been on my mind lately which uh, we got, I got a bunch of stuff to show you to talk about tonight. One thing that's been on my mind is language and the use of language and more specifically how it paints a picture in your mind, right? I think it is uh, important to be as accurate with your, your words and your language as possible and be understanding of others that may not be as accurate with things and not, you know, cast judgment upon those people. So what am I talking about here? I am talking about rock and mineral identification. And I'm going to let, I'm going to, I am of the opinion that it is important. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be important to you, but I think it should be important if you're communicating about things with other individuals. So if, if I, uh, I have some, I have some examples here. So if I, uh, let's grab a rock of, from the shelf here. Words paint pictures in your, in your head, right? If I show you this and I call it a whim-wham, that means nothing to you. If I call it an agate, it means something to you. We have an agreed upon thing. Like if I say something is an agate, that paints a picture in your head. If I show you something and say that, it conveys what an item is. And that is important. If I say it's a Botswana agate, that also paints a picture in your mind of where it came from and on and on and on. Like that's just the way words work, right? So when it comes to having conversations about rocks and minerals with other people, it's good to just do the best you can and, you know, um, you know, encourage others to do the best you can. Don't be a hall monitor. We're not talking about being a hall monitor. Nobody likes that. But, um, you know, it adds a level of depth and richness to the rock hounding hobby when you have words to connect with the things that you find, you know, um, some of the things that I think are very useful depending on what you're doing. And they might be more useful than you think. Um, you know, books, Geiger counters, right? Hardness, pick set, be able to look at things up close, like a loop. These things are important um, to some people, not everybody, but when it comes to identifying things, what they are, what they are not, they can be very useful tools that you can't replace with something. You, you can't replace that over there with an app on your phone, which that was something we made a video about here. Uh, actually made th put up three videos this week, which that's a lot of videos. Um, I guess four if you count, if you count the Saturday video. Um, so yeah, you know, we did the Rock ID app. We did the gypsum crystals. These ones went out there, got the Feldspar crystals. So I think the identification is important. Um, what is, what is this? Okay. So I'm just going to set that there for a sec while I talk. <clears throat> um, I think it's important to try to, uh, you know, have words to apply to things. Um, this rock, that rock, was given to me recently. And I, I think it's a perfect, perfect example here of, of, of language being used to convey an idea. 
So most people probably step over this thing and be like, oh, gray rock, like whatever, gray rock, doesn't matter. And, you know, um, you know, if we get really close, if we focus, there is some small crystalline structure to this rock. Include that in there. Is this a keeper for you? I would hope so. So, how about that? Is it a keeper now? Isn't that nice? We'll look at this with the lights off here in a second. But what we have here is a Uper light. Now, Mike from Wisconsin Gold Rush sent me this Uper light. But what is a Uper light? Um, a Uper light is not actually a Uper light. That is a rebranding of this specific rock, specific, I can't speak tonight, specific mineral. So what you're seeing glowing is sodalite, and the actual rock is cyanite. So it's a sodalite rich cyanite. That's what we have here. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but if I say a cyanite rock that's rich in sodalite, some people that will paint that picture in your mind, some people won't. I feel like uh, more people will have an idea of what's happening when you say Uperlite. So I, Mike's a swell guy, and I'm so happy that he shared this with me. It couldn't have been more perfect timing for discussing this topic tonight. Um, well, so we're going to look at it under other other spectrums of light. Um, but I, I think that's a fascinating thing. I think uh, it can just it can just add so much. It can add so much. So um, I'm going to shut the lights off here. We'll give this thing a look. I'm not going to shut them off entirely. Um, we have a shortwave, shortwave light here. Let's actually do this. A little darker. Shortwave. We get nothing. This is your more affordable 395 nanometer UV light. You get something, right? We can pull it away and you can kind of see, but these are very into the visible spectrum. So they're less ideal. And then we have the 365, which that just pops off. Like I have uh, several videos up about uh, fluorescent rocks and minerals, UV stuff, all of that. Um, I love these. Like, there's just something, it, it's the novelty factor of it, I guess. You're bright as, bright as can be. Um, the novelty factor of it is just amazing. And I like that with these, the, the Uper lights, they're definitely like a sleeper rock, right? Like, nobody, um, I love that these are like a sleeper rock. I mean, most people would step right over this and not pick it up, but hit it with the, the UV light. And it's amazing. It's amazing. So that's that's my take on it. Now to each their own, right? Um, you don't have to agree with me on the subject, but uh, you know I think that most people should be able to see the value in uh, properly identifying your rocks and minerals, especially when you're you're talking with other people. You know, um, I did the Rock Hound podcast this week, which was awesome. Um, I will put a link up there and links down below. Definitely go give it a listen. It's a much longer form uh, than than here. You know, um, I try to keep it nice and nice and tight and under 15 here on the Saturday night special over there. It's a lot longer of a format, uh, but go check it out. It's 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 a great, great thing to to have the opportunity to do. And, uh, you know, talk about different different stuff we have going on. Um, I did some cutting and some polishing on the Noble Serpentine from the Wild Turkey Mine, which that was rad. I, I like this. A nice thick. Check out the thickness of that slab. So I can have a nice piece that I can set up in my one of my display cases. Uh, I think that'll look quite quite nice. Quite nice. Well, I uh, have a bunch of new additions on the website, which that has been going uh, quite well, I think. And uh, I have some 
big plans for the future. This coming week, I have a couple of really good videos. Um, I got to clear off the, ta the the bench here so that I can kind of, I want to, I like giving you guys sneak peeks, um, but this sneak peek, I kind of need a little bit of room for. So uh, bear with me while I clear off some space here. Um, <clears throat> so I want to, uh, I'm going to be doing something kind of extra fun for hitting 10,000 subscribers. That's coming not this week, but the following week. I think, uh, I think it'll be fun. It'll, it'll give a different perspective to things. Um, I have to actually back you up <laughs> for this one. Let's do one of these. Have fun some of that. Okay, so this week, um, yeah, I don't know. Check this out. We'll just do one of these. Okay. This coming week, we're going to be getting uh, some big agates. Um, this is one of those big, big agates. Um, not my biggest agate I've ever found, but it's still, still up there. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think we're going to have to call this one wraps everybody. Uh, I appreciate you, you know, um, we are uh, chugging right along here on this channel with uh, no end in sight for topics to cover about rock hounding. I mean, uh, I feel like often when I look at the number of places I haven't been, the number of subjects I haven't covered, I feel like I've, I'm not even scratching the surface. You know, um, there's going to be a lot more in-depth content coming. And, you know, that's one of the things that I'm so excited about with the website. It allows me to do video, photo, in-depth articles and really kind of uh, digest some of these topics that are, are big, that it's, it's a challenge to tackle, you know. So uh, I appreciate all of the views and the support and the nice comments. Um, I feel like it's, uh, it, it keeps, keeps me moving in the right direction, you know. So uh, everybody, y'all have a nice Saturday. Um, and, uh, hopefully, uh, you get to go out and do some rock hounding. Take care. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like the content that I'm producing here on this channel and you want to support the content even further, you can do so by becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below. The membership comes with a growing library of exclusive videos and just great other extra content. So uh, just follow the links down below and I will see you on the next video.